The slave, I often say, lives in fear, but the son does not live in fear. Somehow God's love drives it out. Somehow having confidence, trust in God, gives us that peace that we need, right? want to talk about Jesus, the healing power of Jesus. Jesus is still the healer. Hallelujah. He's a doctor. He will come and visit you whenever you need, 24 hours a day. God is good. I want to talk about my healing, but on my healing, I want it to relate to your healing. My healing is how God healed my heart and my mind with my mother. Now you think about it. yours may be your spouse, your sister, your neighbor, your friend, someone in the church, but you know, anytime you're around that person and, and you can't be around them, you can't even think about their name, makes you angry, something rises up in you, there's a healing and God is ready to heal. You can be anywhere, no special place. But you know, I thank God my mother had a lot of children and I was the middle child. And I love my mom and I know my mom loved me, but there was something missing. Like I couldn't connect to any of my other sisters. And so there was, I felt a void. And so, you know, you, 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 you think you're trying to be good enough. Everything she wanted me to do, I would do it. And so I would get that praise and that recognition. And that was the only time that I could get it. But I thank God for, we don't know what people go through. We don't know what people are thinking. And, 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 and we're thinking wrong. So we need healing as well as they need healing. And I thank God the last year I had that opportunity to spend with my mom and, and, and to really understand she was the best mom I could have ever had. We don't know what they went through. And, and, and she always kept a smile on her face. You know, she always wanted somebody else to be happy, you know. And, and even in her suffering, but she made sure that we had everything that we needed. And I am return. don't say you ain't gonna be like your mom, you're not gonna be like your dad, because yes you are, because I was just like my mom. I worried about my kids, I wanted the best for them. And, and after I saw what she went through and how her struggle was so that we could have things, it made me appreciate her more, it made me love her more, and, and the fellowship that we had, because before she passed, I asked her to forgive me for not being a good daughter. And she said, no, forgive me for not being a good mother. And I said, I had the best mother, but I didn't appreciate it. I didn't know it. I didn't realize it. And sometimes we don't know what we have before us. And because we're looking at the wrong things, the enemy likes to bring division. And so that's why God likes to keep us healed and keep our minds healed. Because when she passed, the enemy tried to make me say, oh, I wish I had spent more my time with my mom, or I wish I had done this, or I wish I did. Don't go back. Don't allow the devil to steal your freedom. That's why your heart and your mind need to be healed and delivered. And only God can do that. And all you have to do is lift your hands. All you have to do is talk to God, ask God to forgive you, ask him to help you, and that stuff will just come out. You'll, you'll be like, you know, like a drain. It will be unclogged and you will be healed and the joy will come back, the peace will come back. And you can forgive, you can forgive and you can love others. And that's what God wanna do. He wanna heal us, he wanna unclog us, he wants us to move forward. Family is all we have. Don't wait till someone die. You can't get them back. So enjoy them while you can. Love, love, love. Forgive, forgive, forgive. Let Jesus change you. Let Jesus turn that mask. From, from ugly and sour and bitter and hatred and unforgiveness. Let him turn it to love, joy, peace, and that you can love and you can live and be free. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. All right, 
We're going to read the first seven verses in chapter 4, beginning at verse 1. Now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, differeth nothing from a servant, though he be lord of all. But is under tutors and governors until the time appointed of the father. Even so we, when we were children, were in bondage under the elements of the world. But when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law. To redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. And because ye are sons, God hath sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. And together, wherefore, wherefore thou, thou art, art no more a servant, servant but, but a, a son. son. And, and if, if a son, son then, then an heir, heir of God through Christ. Christ. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's pray. Father, thank you for heirship. Thank you for sonship. We thank you for the adoption. We praise you and honor you for bringing us into the family of God. We thank you. Let peace flood each heart. Let the freedom, O oh Lord, that comes, Lord God, with faith and peace be ours today. We honor you and thank you in advance. Bless those that are listening by way of television. Give peace in Jesus' name, we pray. Take full control and we'll honor you. And every praise and every glory will go to you alone. In Jesus' name, everybody said, Amen. 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 God bless you. You may be seated. Praise the Lord. Talk a little bit, a bit about sonships. We're the sons of God. I was reading that passage this week, just in reading, <clears throat> in my reading, and uh, I just felt a little tinge of his presence as I began to read um, in chapter 4. And it's always good to be reminded as to who we really are, right? Amen. Uh, so the... Um, um, uh, commentary was talking about Paul um, really stressing in chapters 3 and 4 the uh, certainty of salvation by grace alone. And uh, you hear him or you see him repeating certain phrases, the works of the law or the hearing of faith in these chapters. We see what's important on his mind and through these chapters he stresses the necessity of believing in the certainty of God's promises just as Abraham did he uses a variety of illustrations of course um, to make his point clear and uh, he made clear that the law only results in exposing the inborn sinfulness of man and his transgression. So when you think in terms of the law, we, we, we are not familiar with the law as the Jews, but we are familiar with self-efforts and trying to please God in our own selves and strength, right? And uh, so works... Um, but he was, to the Jews, he was speaking to them because, and you have to remember now, the hundreds of years the Jews had accepted the Mosaic law. I mean, just hundreds of years. And, and Moses told them that if any man preaches or teaches anything different from the law, Basically, he should be put to death or stoned to death. And so over the years, you know, you can see how um, this became so prevalent. And but one of the things that was so amazing is um, the scribes and the Pharisees, the, scribe, the scribes were really copiers of the law. The Pharisees were the strict doers, and they gave their, themselves to obeying the law. They really gave themselves to it. 
And you, you, you got to wonder how, when Christ came, they knew when basically around the time he was supposed to be born and where he was supposed to be born. They, they had all those prophecies. And yet when he came, of course, they didn't recognize him. That, of course, was scary in itself. But then there were those like Anna the prophetess and Simeon who was right on point. Anna the prophetess, you know, came in the temple at a certain time. Simeon came by the spirit uh, uh, into the temple and they began to recognize the infant or the child Jesus uh, when he was there and dedicated to the Lord. And uh, um, so it just is something that uh, just kind of struck my attention here. But as he was sharing here in the book of Galatians, like I said, chapters 3 and 4, Paul sets out to stress the certainty of salvation by grace alone. And we have to remind ourselves sometimes uh, that it's by his grace alone uh, that salvation is wrought through his son. And um, he, his, his suffering, his obedience, and his victorious life uh, guaranteed salvation by grace alone to, to all who believes, right? And, um, and so he gives some, gives some, like I said, illustrations. And to the Roman citizens was a, uh, uh, he, he talks about the toga, which was uh, a white woolen garment with the purple stripes on it. And this toga, worn by the Roman citizens, was a, 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 a garment of special status. And it was a cherished symbol of this Roman, or his, his uh, exalted position. And so Paul, he talks, basically gives an example there. And in a similar way, when we, as Galatians points out, when we, uh, Paul, he said, talking concerning the Jews, when uh, we were children, we were under the beggarly elements, elementary elements of the world, and basically under tutors. And, but when the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his son, made of a woman, to redeem. Somebody say redeem them from the law and the bondage that the law brought and the fear. And um, so he continues to emphasize that and as we see chapters 4, 1 through 7 and throughout it, the whole chapter as well, uh, that uh, certainty of the salvation by grace alone. And so it gets rid of the self-effort and it gives us a sense of rest and peace, right? And he says that he was talking in Chapters 3 through 8, chapter 5, he says, Therefore being justified by faith, we have something in return, right? We have peace with God through our Lord. And so we must be reminded, anytime our peace is disturbed, we must remember that it's the finished work of God, right? Right? It is the finished work uh, of, of, of God, what he's wrought for our lives. And the works were finished, the Bible says, before the foundation of the world. And so I was reading that, and he says, now I say that the heir, uh, as long as he's a child, differs nothing from a servant, though he be lord of all, but is under tutors and governors till the time appointed of the father. And he said, even so we, when we, where children were in bondage under the elements of the world, but when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. And then verse 6 says, And because ye are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. Then he concludes in this portion, Wherefore thou art no more a servant, 
or a bond slave, but a son. And if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. We are heirs. We inherit the kingdom of God and all his blessings, right? And we know the consummation of that is um, futuristic, but we still now, as children of the kingdom, can enjoy blessings now, right? And, uh, of course, in the future, we are going to experience the full benefit of um, this salvation. And, but I thought about servants or slaves, and I thought about sons. Three things that was mentioned. One is heirs, two is servants, and three is sons. And uh, the writer says this about a servant. Servants obey because they are subject to rules. Sons obey because they are led by the Spirit into a clear realization that the Father's will is the best possible way. Can I say that again? Servants obey because they are subject to rules. Sons obey because they are led by the Spirit into a clear realization that the Father's will is the best possible way. Hallelujah. It is the will of God that is important in our lives. The Bible says, whosoever doeth the will of my Father. Everybody remember that scripture? So it pleases God. Jesus came to do his Father's will. And so when you think about this Freedom is key, and peace is key, right? When you think of, uh, of freedom, you're thinking, and when, you, when, you, when we see that the righteous lives by faith, right? Are y'all still out there? <laughs> then the slave has a total different mindset and mentality, right? The slave, I often say, lives in fear. But the son does not live in fear. Right? Somehow God's love drives it out. Somehow having confidence, trust in God, gives us that peace that we need, right? And... Um, we realize that there is no hostility between us and God. By faith, we believe. And we believe in the finished work of Jesus Christ. We believe in the work on the cross, right? And um, so uh, we realize that however if we're going to get to know God, we obey his spirit's prompting, right? Are y'all with me? Because John said in First John, let me let me read it. First John two says, and hereby we do know that we know him if we keep his commandments. Right? He that says I know him and keepeth not his commandments is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But whoso keepeth his word, in him verily is the love of God perfected. Hereby know we that we are in him. So uh, God brings us into a greater sense of experiential knowledge as we obey the promptings of his spirit, obey him right. And uh, we begin to get to know him better. And so um, um, uh, God is, 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 is with us. And I believe he wants us to have peace when it comes to our lives, and no matter what takes place, right? Peace. 
And then uh, as I was looking into that, my mind just started thinking about, you know, Paul really, and not only that, but in Romans, he began to uh, say something very similar. And, uh, and so it's found in Romans chapter 8. He says, verse 14, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Then he says, For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received what? The spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The spirit itself bears witness with our spirits. I heard one man say, you don't need to tell somebody they're saved. The spirit will bear witness, right? The spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs of Christ, if so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. But the, f- the goal of the gospel is freedom, to bring freedom, right? Amen. Freedom. Look at somebody says, it's freedom, it's freedom. in Christ Jesus. And so we, we, we uh, as we think in terms of the promises and in terms of what God has done by his wonderful grace, it is to bring peace and freedom. The Bible says the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, of course, but it is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost, right? So there's a joy that's produced by the Spirit we talked about. There is a peace that God brings and gives to us. Now, John says, First John says, But beloved, now are we the sons of God. It doesn't appear what we shall be, but we know when he appear, we're going to be like him, right? So everyone that has this hope in himself purifies himself. We are God's people, God's children right now. And, and somehow or another, he was just kind of reminding me that Jesus, Christ is the head, right? And the church, his people, are his body, right? So, so, so try to remember this. Now, okay, look at me for a moment. This is my head, right? This is my body, right? Do you think it all goes together? See Jesus now. He's the head, right? And if we are his body, you think that he loves us? He loves his own self and he loves us, right? We are his body, brothers and sisters. And so that's how God the Father sees us as his people. We're his body. And um, now, Romans 5, and Paul, he he, he preached this throughout and, 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 and was determined, so he had, he had a lot of opposition that he came up against. The Judaizers, they wanted to incorporate circumcision. <clears throat> but then Romans 5, 12 says, Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, right? And death by sin. And so death passed upon all men, well, that all have sinned, right? Y'all with me? So death passed upon all men because all had sinned. But let me go back. All had sinned, but who did sin? Adam sinned. <laughs> are, you, are you with me? Adam sinned. Now all we did was just be born, right? But yet, we were born sinners, right? Well, that's not the end of the story. Christ, through Christ, let me, let me read it. For if by one man's offense, death reigned by one, right? Much more they which receive abundance of what? Grace and of the gift of righteousness, righteousness is a gift, right? Shall reign in life by who? One. one, Jesus Christ. Therefore, as by the offense of one, judgment came upon all men to condemnation. Let me say that again. Therefore, as by the offense of one, 
Adam, right? Judgment came upon all men to condemnation, right? Even so, he said, by the righteousness of one, the free gift came upon all men to justification of life. So we are justified, which means declared righteous. So God declares us righteous, right? Not by our good efforts, right? But by faith in Jesus Christ. If one man's sin brought condemnation upon all of creation, right? So when a person gets born into the world, he's born a sinner and he he did nothing, nothing but be born, right? Even so, when we uh, receive Jesus Christ because he satisfied the requirements, right? Full of the law. And so now we are made righteous by one man, right? Jesus Christ. He is our righteousness, right? And so we are complete in him. So therefore, tell the devil, you cannot condemn me. You hear what I'm saying? You cannot condemn me. I'm not condemnable. I am justified. I am pronounced or I am declared righteous by faith in the blood of the Lamb, right? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. And so he can try all of his stuff to point out our failures, all that he wanna. But you and I know. Hallelujah. It doesn't change our state, right? All right, now look at me. All right, now let's go to Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1 says, And you hath he quickened, which means to make alive, who were dead in trespasses and sins, wherein in time past you walked according to the course of this world. I saw your 